Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, well, let me give you the past 48 hours. This all started building up over last week. I was aware of things, but in denial, until actually there was no denying Sunday night. Sunday night, I went into extreme intestinal distress, couldn't do anything about it, and actually about 2.30 in the morning Sunday night, my wife became aware and I thought she was gonna to have to take me to the emergency room. That's the level of distress that I was at. If not for this country's horrible healthcare system and horrible insurance system that made me think that I just did not want to deal with the expense of going to the emergency room, I would have gone to the emergency room, but I didn't. So I waited until the morning and she took me to the hospital. My, my doctor group has walk-ins and I went in at 8.30, was told I couldn't be seen till 1.30, had to go home, wait <laughs> to be seen. Long story short, the monkey's a dumbass. I do not have nearly enough fiber or normal water in my life, and I paid the price for it again. Whilst we were sitting there waiting for the guy to come back after his consulting with the other doctors, my ever-loving wife was making a list of all high-fiber foods that we then went immediately after leaving the hospital to the grocery store to, to purchase. And I just finished going to Trader Joe's today to get what we couldn't find at that particular grocery store. So the monkey is now on a super strict, high fiber with lots of water diet. And I'm also having a lot of Miralax to fix the situation. And then I'm done living like this. That means that I'm not going to, I'm going to be super strict and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to be a hell of a lot more sensible about this on a consistent, ongoing basis so that I do not have this happen to me again. I spent most of the day yesterday asleep so that I wasn't awake to experience the extreme discomfort of what I was going through. It sucked. I barely ate anything yesterday out of fear for what might happen from eating. That meant that I had absolutely zero caffeine. By the end of the day, and into early last night, I thought my fucking head was going to explode from that caffeine withdrawal. I did have my uh, morning oats that my wife prepared for me last night. They're, or, or right away, they're called overnight oats. And basically she puts this concoction together in, into a, a container and it sits in the fridge overnight so that by the morning it's ready to be eaten. Delicious. I also had my Miralax cocktail first thing and I've had plenty of water and I also had a pot of coffee. So. I'm not that horrible today. What does that mean? Why am I telling you all this? Well, because it's my daily life and I tell you this shit all the time anyways. And you know that, that I'm a dumb monkey and that I don't always do things that are in my best interest. When you're laying there in the bathroom floor in misery and in your head feeling like you're going to explode and then die, it sort of changes your perspective on things. Now, when you also have a father who has cancer, who has cataracts, who is not in a good place. It also gives you perspective. The perspective that things aren't as bad as you may think because there are a lot of things that are worse and a lot of people in a very worse off place than you are and maybe you shouldn't be whining and bitching about it. Now, I'm not gonna take away anybody's pain or experience because everybody experiences their pain differently or, or whatever they're going through. It, it isn't to discount what they're going through and like, oh, you think you got it bad. Listen to my, my bullshit. It's to just help you get some perspective that perhaps maybe what you're going through, while not great, it could always be worse, but it could also always be better. And a lot of the decisions that we make or don't make are the reason that we're in the situation that we're in. That's the monkey to a T for just about every facet of my life. Now, fortunately, I have a fantastic unbelievable support system in the very few people that I consider to be true good friends, an amazing family, and of course my ever stellar, don't know why, amazing wife. Don't know why she's so amazing to me because I feel like sometimes I'm just such a jack off that why is she wasting time with me? If she heard me say that, she'd kick me in the balls because she hates when I talk that way about myself. But I digress. Fortunately, I have that. And, and that helps get me going back in the right direction. That being said, I have to say that I have had a shit year, a shit year that is basically self-induced for argument's sake, because I've made some pretty bad decisions or I haven't made better decisions in a more timely manner. 
And that's why I've experienced such crap this year. And <laughs> literally, bazing. So I, I've gotten to a point now where I, I have taken this all as a learning experience of what to do, what not to do, and what to appreciate, and a realignment of hierarchy of things that, that are most important to me. Without a doubt, what jumped to number one is health. All the other stuff that, that, that I made poor decisions on or why my health has been so shitty. I have not taken care of myself, mentally or physically, or spiritually if you, if you get into that sort of thing. I have been horrible to myself all year. It's been a really bad year of bad decisions, and I have paid the price for it with, with a complete, just catastrophic mental reaction that led to horrible physical health, and I'm done with that shit. I'm done being a dumb monkey when it comes to, to that. Health being the most important thing, all the cameras, lenses, software, websites, social media, blah, 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 blah. All that shit is now going to take a back seat to, the, to my original journey for this, which was being a creator with a body that doesn't always want to cooperate. Well, my body's going to cooperate, damn it, because I'm going to make it. I'm also more of a realist now in my older age than I was in my youth. And my wife said something yesterday that, that was like the, the crux of the whole affair. I jokingly said, why the hell can't I just eat whatever I want, do whatever I want, and ignore everything and not have everything be okay? And she quipped back at me, because you're not 18 years old, honey. And there you go. The folly of youth. Yes, when you're 18, when you're 20, you're not thinking about how your colon is going to be impacted or, or, or isn't going to work right. You're not thinking about how your spine is going to be angry and you're going to have fucking pain every moment of every part of your day for the rest of your life. You're not thinking about the fact that because you spent like a fucking idiot, you've now caused financial stress that you have to dig yourself out from. You're not thinking about the fact that and on and on and on. And that's great. Take that time to live that way because it ain't going to happen forever. Trust me. I have now, again, reordered my alignment of things that are important to me. And that is that nothing is important to me as my health. Because if I don't have my health, well, all right, good health, which I can control to an extent, then nothing else matters. Laying on the bathroom floor Sunday night, yet again, in intestinal distress, my camera wasn't going to help me. My audio settings weren't going to help me. My dead cat wasn't going to help me. See where I'm going there? None of that shit mattered. My job wasn't going to help me. Now, fortunately, I have an amazing boss who I kept in contact with yesterday, and he was just like, you deal with that. That's more important. And yeah, you need to start eating better. All that other shit doesn't matter. Nothing else on your list matters if you aren't healthy enough to freaking be able to deal with everything that's on the rest of the list. If you're unhealthy and you're bedridden, you can't go out and take pictures anyways. You, you can't do your job anyways. You, at least you can't be semi-happy or at least not miserable doing it unless you have your health. So kids, I'm going to get off my soapbox and I'm going to just say, you need to take a strong, long, realistic look at the list of what's important to you in your life and you need to put health number one. And I don't care who you are. And I don't care how healthy you are now. Shit doesn't last forever. As you age, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. It gets harder to recover from things. You can't do a lot of the things that you used to do. And you take that for granted now, and eventually it's going to come up and it's going to bite you in the ass. Today, I'm not going to bitch about the smudges that somehow are, are already on my freaking ND filter. I'm not going to complain about the fact that the parking lot's blown out. I'm not going to complain about the fact that I have wisps of hair that aren't staying in my ponytail. What I'm going to tell you is go get yourself a delicious high fiber meal, drink plenty of water, get as much rest as you can get, and just know that everything else is just sort of inconsequential compared to number one. Take care of yourselves, okay? Do that for me. Do that for yourself. Do that for everyone that you care about because that's really all that matters. So that's all you get for today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.